You know that inflation is a problem if McDonald's comes out and says that people can't afford their burgers anymore. And well, that's exactly what's happening right now. McDonald's says that low income consumers are starting to crack. And that's why McDonald's is looking for ways to create cheaper burgers. But the real reason why this is so interesting is normally when you start facing tough times in the economy, the discount retailers are the ones that start to see the biggest boom because, well, people are looking for cheaper alternatives. But that's not what we're seeing happen right now. I mean, even if you take a look at what's happening with dollar stores, dollar stores are struggling instead of growing and you're seeing them downsize. And now McDonald's is feeling the pressure because they're looking for new and innovative ways to try to keep customers coming back. And if you want to hear it directly from the source, here's a quote from the CEO of McDonald's. Take a look. Consumers continue to be even more discriminating with every dollar that they spend as they faced elevated prices in their day-to-day -day spending. But remember, inflation is a double-edged sword on one end, McDonald's is now struggling to sell their burgers to people because it's so expensive. But on the other end, McDonald's also has to face the burden of inflation because they got to pay their employees more money. But now they're looking for alternatives to that as well. And yes, that means McDonald's robots. Now the inflation part of this story shouldn't be that big of a surprise because inflation has been coming in hotter than expected. But what's a little bit more, let's call it newsy, is that Americans are starting to become even less confident in our economy today. Consumer confidence is a measure of how strong people believe the economy is going to be in the future. And the reason why this is important is because people spend money based off of how they perceive the economy to be. When people are confident in the future, that means they are confident they'll continue to have a job, they're confident that they're going to get a raise, they're confident that they'll be more wealthy, so they're more likely to go out and spend because well, they're not concerned about the economy. But when consumer confidence is falling, then people are more concerned about the future of their economy, they're concerned about the future of their job, they're concerned about getting a raise, and so they're less likely to spend, more likely to keep some money in their pocket. Now, keeping money in your pocket, saving money, paying off your debt is good for your financial situation, but from an economic standpoint, it hurts the economy because that means you're not spending money at McDonald's. And if you're not spending money at McDonald's, well then McDonald's is not making money and they might not have money not to pay their CEO, but also not to pay the salaries for their employees. Let me read you a line from the chief economist at the Consumer Board, which is the organization which tracks consumer confidence. Take a look. Consumers became less positive about the current labor market situation and are more concerned about future business conditions, job availability, and income. In other words, more and more people are starting to get worried about what's gonna happen in the economy in the future. And this kind of makes sense because as of May 1st, 2024, job openings fell to the lowest level in three years. So what I want to talk about today are three things. Number one is I want to talk about what's going on with companies that are facing the higher costs of inflation in the sense that consumers, people can't keep buying their stuff because of the inflation. Number two is I want to talk about what's going on in the job market and the changes that we're seeing happen today. Number three is I want to talk about the things that you need to know and understand that way you can find the best opportunities and take the best care of yourself. So before we jump into number one, talking about what's going on with companies, a quick reminder that on May 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern time, I'm hosting a live free and virtual stock market mastery workshop where I'm going to be going over my stock market investing strategy, the things that I'm paying attention to in 2024 as we're seeing the slower economy, as we're seeing high inflation, as we're seeing the higher interest rates, particularly when it comes to the stock market. So I'll talk about how I invest my money into funds, how I look at things like ETFs, how you can take a look at index funds, mutual funds, but I'll also be talking about active investing, not trading, investing, which is where how can you find an undervalued company? How do you research companies? So this is a completely free workshop. If you'd like to join me, all you have to do is register. I got the link for you down in the description. Hello. McDonald's, like every other company in the world, has been facing inflationary pressure, and because of that, they've raised the prices of their stuff over the last few years. Take a look at this quote from the New York Post. McDonald's has jacked up its menu prices by more than 100% over the course of the last decade, more than three times the rate of the United States inflation, according to a research report. Between 2014 and today, the reported inflation over those 10 years is right around 32%. But if you compare that to the prices of things that McDonald's sells, this is where you'll start to see the discrepancy. A 10-piece McNugget meal is now $10.99, which is 83% more expensive than it was a decade ago when it cost just $5.99. Then a McFlurry, which used to cost $2.39 in 2014, costs $4.49 today. And finally, if we take a look at the quarter pounder with cheese meal that now costs $11.99, which is more than double the $5.39 it used to cost in 2014. That means over the last 10 years, reported inflation is 32%. But if you want to buy the McNugget, Nugget meal is going to cost you 83% more. If you want to buy the McFlurry, it's going to cost you 87% more. Or if you want to buy the quarter pounder with cheese meal, it's going to cost you a whole whopping 122% more. I know that's not a reference on the Whopper. We're talking about a whopping 122% more. So now this is a situation that a lot of companies have been facing where, well, 
the prices of things have gone up. The cost of getting the meat has gone up. The cost of getting the buns have gone up. The cost of the labor has gone up. The cost of the properties have gone up. And so now what McDonald's and a lot of companies are seeing is, okay, it's not just our stuff that's become more expensive. Groceries have become more expensive. Cars have become more expensive. Your housing has become more expensive. And now because people have to pay more money for everything, they're stretched out. And people have less and less money to go out and buy things, including things like McDonald's. And this is where now McDonald's is saying is that they're trying to find more affordable ways to offer more affordable products on their menu so they can keep customers coming back for some affordable food. And this brings me to what's going on in the second part of the story, which is what's going on with the job market. Because what we're seeing today is that job openings have fallen to some of the lowest levels that we've seen in the last three years. Right now, there are about eight and a half million job openings in the United States. And at the same time, there are about six and a half million unemployed Americans in the United States. These are the reported numbers which means for every unemployed person in the United States today, there are about 1.3 job openings available in May of 2024. Now, the reason why I want you to understand this is that this is 1.3 today. If we back up two years ago in May 2022, back then there were two job openings for every unemployed person in the United States, which meant two years ago, it was much easier for employees or unemployed people to be pickier with which job they want to choose because you'd have two job openings for every unemployed person. Now, of course, I understand that sometimes these numbers can feel not so realistic, but you got to understand the trend. Because if it was two job openings for every unemployed person in 2022 and today it's 1.3, what does that mean? That means it's tougher to find a job today. There are less job openings for every unemployed person out there today. There are less available job openings out there today, which means if you're looking for a new job, it's tougher now than it was a couple of years ago. But this is where I don't want you to just look at pieces of data kind of in their own vacuum. I want you to start applying things together because I remember what we talked about in number one. Number one, we talked about how companies are facing the pressure of inflation because consumers are spending less money. McDonald's, the dollar stores, these companies are struggling because people have less money to spend at McDonald's and the dollar store. But now on the second hand is you have this more competitive job market and not just that, companies need to be more efficient. They need to produce more because if they're struggling making money, they got to find a way to continue maintaining their profit margins. And how do you do that? Well, now you got to figure out how you can make your team more productive. And this is happening during a time where more power is going into the hands of the employer less than the employee. Because back a couple of years ago, when employees had the upper hand, because you can go out and find whatever job you wanted, because there was two job openings for every unemployed person. Now it's less. That means more power is going into the hands of the employer, which means employers can say, well, you got to come back into the office because we need you to be more productive. Or your department is not producing, so we're going to lay this department off. Or we need more work or more productivity out of each employee to justify your salary. And for certain careers, you have to think if the cost of your salary keeps going up, companies are going to be looking for alternatives, whether that means outsourcing your job to somewhere cheaper, whether it's Mexico, whether it's China, whether that's India, or maybe that means finding a robot that can do your job for you. Maybe that means using artificial intelligence because the reality is companies want to find the most cost-effective way to produce a good job. And if they can find somebody overseas that they can do it better, especially during a time where remote work is kind of becoming more normal, well then why not just hire somebody in Mexico? Why not hire somebody in India who will work twice as hard for a third of the price? And not just that, maybe they can find some artificial intelligence to do that even better with less errors. And this is where what I want you to understand is if you want to protect yourself in your job security, what you need to do is number one, make sure you are making yourself valuable. And that means you are investing in your craft. You're investing in how you can be good. You're constantly investing in your career because if all you're trying to do is just go to work every day to get a paycheck, well, let me tell you something. Companies don't want average employees. There's no company in America that says we want the most average employee. What every company in America wants is the best. They want people that are working. They want people that are driven. So the first thing you got to do is invest in yourself and make sure you're providing value to your company that is less replaceable. And then the second thing you want to do beyond that is also keep working to improve yourself beyond just your craft. Because if you realize that, you know what, I'm in a career where things are probably going to get outsourced, start being proactive. Look for positions, look for careers that are somewhere else that are less likely to be outsourced. Start investing and being proactive in what you're doing. Because if you understand, like if you're working in the auto industry and you see that your divisions around you are being outsourced to Mexico, they're being outsourced to India, and you're just sitting there not doing anything about it, well, maybe you want to start getting proactive to see how you can either make yourself more valuable, how you can be in a different department or move to a different career or a different company that's less likely to be outsourced. And then number three, of course, can't end a video without talking about this. 
This is where it pays to be financially educated. Because let me tell you something, companies are in the business of driving profits. And if they can do your job at 30% of the price, which is 80% as good, they might want to do that. Now, I'm not saying every company is going to do that, but companies are looking for ways to cut costs, but also increase their profits. And if a company can increase their profits without you, without a human, they're going to try to do that because they want to increase the value of their company. They want to increase the profitability of the company. They want to increase the share price of this company. And this is where now what you want to do to be able to benefit from whatever is happening is to be an owner of the company. You want to invest in the companies because at the end of the day, companies are driven by profits. They're driven with this motive to make money. You can hate it or you can love it or you can win from it. And that's what I want you to do. So I want you to understand the way that the system works that we can win in this economic system because technology comes with change and there's always going to be disruptors and it always makes some people upset. Like when people were able to automate the car wash, guess what? That costs a lot of people their jobs. When Henry Ford created the automobile, well, that cost some people their jobs because that means the horse breeders that was selling horses to everybody, they lost their jobs as well. When the computer came out, when Apple came out, when the Mac came out, well, guess what? The people that were selling encyclopedias lost their jobs as well. And so anytime you have innovation that hurts some people, but that is there to benefit society, right? We're better today because we have technology than before. Now you can disagree with it, but the reality is Amazon has made it much easier for you and me to go out and buy things online than it was when I had to drive 20 minutes to the store, then shop around for whatever groceries or things that I wanted and then drive home. It's much easier for you to do it online. Yes, there are pains that come with it, but the way that you win is by becoming financially educated and investing in the things that make our economy our economy. But in addition to that, you also win by continuing to protect yourself, by working to be a winner, by working to innovate, by working to invest in yourself, and by working to continue to produce more value instead of just sitting on the sidelines and hoping nothing bad is ever gonna happen. If you remember back earlier in 2024, the Federal Reserve Bank said that they would be cutting interest rates by their May 1st meeting, which didn't happen. Maybe we're going to see another potential interest rate hike in the future. The former United States Treasury Secretary said, you have to take seriously the possibility that the next interest rate move will be upwards rather than downwards. 